Today we're looking at lesson 5 and 9 tenths line plots using fractional units. Why are we looking at line plots today? Well, you need to be able to interpret data in line plot form and be able to answer questions regarding that data. So let's take a look at the how. First of all, we're going to take a look at refresher memory, I should say, on what a line plot is. So as we look at this line plot, we can see that this line plot has a title called Candy Bars. And on the left side, we can see the number of students. And at the bottom, we can see the number of candy bars. So if I look at this line plot, I should be able to answer questions like, um, how many students had five candy bars? And you should be able to tell me that there were one, two, three, four students that had five candy bars. Or which students had the least number of candy bars? And that would be the person that had zero, right? We had one student that had zero candy bars. We had one student that had one. We had two students that had two. Okay, so just this was used to refresh your memory on how do we look at a line plot and what does it all mean. So we're going to take this information now and we're going to turn it into how do I use a line plot with fractions in it. And we're going to take a look at this line plot. So this line plot has a title, Hours Spent at Soccer Practice. And it tells me time down at the bottom in hours. But on the left, as you can see, we don't have anything on this side. So this is a very basic line plot. If I wanted to know what was the most hours that someone spent at soccer practice, I would look down here to the right and I would see two and two-fourths hours is the longest amount of time that someone spent at soccer practice and there was only one person that did that. Now if we looked at what was the average or what was the time that most people spent at soccer practice we could see that two hours we had one, two, three, four people that spent two hours at practice. So a line plot if we had to make one Basically, we would set it up similar to this. We would put a title at the top. We would make a line here like so, and we would put whatever numbers that we needed to use with our line plot. Sometimes you're going to have a title on the left side. Sometimes you won't, like this one doesn't. And then most of the time, we're going to have a label down at the bottom to tell us what those numbers represent. One of the other things that we're going to be doing with this lesson today is adding and subtracting uh, fractions and mixed numbers. So I just want to kind of refresh your memory. We've done a little bit of this already. But our first problem is 1 and 1 half plus 2 and 1 half. And we probably want to use a strategy that you've used in class to go ahead and add these. Now we lucked out. We have the same denominator in both of these. So I can add my whole number 1 plus 2 which is going to give me 3 and then I'm going to add my numerators for both of these fractions which is going to give me 2 and bring my denominator over. Now 2 over 2 or 2 halves is the same as 1. So in this particular instance my actual answer would be 4 because we're going to add that whole number to our 3. Let's take a look at the bottom question. 4 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 1 fourth. I'm going to do my 4 minus my 1, which gives me 3. And again, I have the same denominator with my fractions. So I'm going to subtract 3 minus 1, which gives me 2. And I bring my denominator over, 3 and 2 fourths. And we all know that 2 fourths is equal or equivalent to one half, so that would also be three and one half. All right, so what are we going to do in class? We will measure each other's head sizes to the nearest one half centimeter, and you'll understand why we're going to do that when you get there. 
We're going to use line plots to answer questions, and we're going to add and subtract fractions and mixed numbers just like I showed you a second ago. So you guys rock. I will see you then.